versus glass thanks very much for watching and i will catch you guys in the new year Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and like the intro mentioned there, the last video that I uploaded wasn't actually my last video of 2020. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 is now out, it's available for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and of course, Google Stadia. And that's what today's video is going to be all about. Now, I've done a ton of different videos on streaming platforms and a ton on Google Stadia. Now, the last video I've actually uploaded here to the channel that was about Google Stadia, it was basically how I thought, in my opinion, that the service wasn't doing so well, player numbers weren't great, pricing options weren't amazing, and just in general, the service itself was, in my opinion, slightly dying off a little bit. Now, as you guys have shown in the like to dislike ratio, a lot of you guys disagreed with me and in the comments, a lot of you guys aired your opinion as to why. Now here on the channel, I'm always trying to be as fair as possible in regards to my reviews, thoughts and opinions. So when you guys had a massive backlash against my last video, I thought actually maybe I could reconsider a couple of things and look at it from a slightly different angle. And one of the main comments that I was getting and over and over again on that video was the fact that I wasn't taking into account future releases on Google Stadia. More importantly, Cyberpunk 2077. Now, Cyberpunk is a massive new RPG from CD Projekt Red, the guys that have bought us the Witcher series of games. It is a massive game, and as you may have seen some other uploads from some other creators here on YouTube, it's a bit of a powerhouse when it comes to those max settings, and just in general the game looking incredible on pretty much any hardware. Now, if you're playing on an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever, and of course, if you've got a high-end gaming PC, again, you're not really going to run into too many problems. However, if if you try and play this on a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 4 Pro or even some of the older Xbox Ones for example, you're going to come across some performance issues and it's not going to look that great. There was also an article that I read on The Verge that was basically saying that if you want to play Cyberpunk, the number one place to play it of course is going to be PC and just under that was actually Google Stadia. So I actually went ahead and pre-ordered Cyberpunk 2077 from Google Stadia. Now in the UK it was $44.99, however it actually came with a really awesome pre-order bundle. So what you actually got with it was a Stadia controller and also a Chromecast Ultra. Now what that allows you to do is play Stadia on your TV and currently, unless the new Chromecast gets an update quite soon, the Chromecast Ultra is actually the only way to play Stadia on a big screen like a TV in your lounge for example to get more of a console gaming experience. And that also then gave me access to the Stadia controller. Now along with the Chromecast Ultra that came in the bundle, which retails for around £70 to £80 here in the UK, which like I mentioned was free when I pre-ordered the game, you do get the Stadia controller which at the moment, like I mentioned, is the only way to play Stadia on a big screen. Now for me, that's kind of where I want to be playing my games. Yes, if I'm going to be playing a really competitive shooter, for example, I'll be playing on a PC or a console. However, if I do want to just sit back and play some story-driven games, for example, I don't see why I can't play it on Stadia, and this controller is definitely going to come in handy. Now, when I've been playing Stadia on mobile before, I have been using the Xbox One controller, and while that has been working fine, the actual Stadia controller has some buttons and features that really make it unique. But that's not why we're here today. The main purpose of this video was to check out Cyberpunk 2077 running on Google Stadia to see if it is actually a viable platform and if the game runs well. And just to kind of get this out of the way at the start of the video, although I will be going into more detail and my girlfriend's going to love this part of the video, I was wrong. But there is a little bit to kind of go over with that. Now, when I say I was wrong, what I mean by that is the performance of Cyberpunk 2077 on Google Stadia is absolutely incredible. Now, yes, you don't have all the amazing graphic settings that you may have on a high-end PC, but you do have the option of a frame rate option, which locks it at 1080p at 60 frames a second, or you can go to a more visual option, which, yes, does limit it to 30 frames a second, but you do get some 4K resolution, and it looks pretty good. Now, when I've been playing it on my PC or on my phone, for example, the experience hasn't necessarily been the same. When you're playing it on a phone, for example, like on my Pixel 5, it just basically scales everything down and doesn't scale for the size of the screen you're going to be working from. Now, that's just because of the way that Stadia works, so if you're going to be playing Cyberpunk on a mobile device, keep in mind that all of the dialogue options, menus, all that kind of stuff is going to be extremely small to see. 
now playing on a computer doesn't really have the same sort of problems because that's how I think the majority of people are going to be playing it. Now for me, I did actually have my iMac installed to Ethernet directly so that I can just get basically right to it in regards to internet speeds and not have to worry about any sort of wireless problems or connection issues. And playing on PC, again, it was pretty good. Now you've got the option of playing with either controller or you can use mouse and keyboard. And again, the input is not one-to-one, -one, I wouldn't say, but it is still extremely good. Now for me though, where it actually shines with Cyberpunk is playing it on a TV with the Chromecast Ultra. Now the main reason for that is the Bluetooth controller isn't actually a Bluetooth controller. The way that it works on pretty much everything is it does have to be wired in. So when I was playing it on my phone, for example, I did have to have it plugged in. And when I was playing it on my iMac, you do have to plug it in via USB. However, when you're playing it on the Chromecast, it actually does everything wirelessly and it uses Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. Now, what that means is a better response time and just overall, the controller feels really good, really responsive, and I had no issues whatsoever. The interface on the TV is also really nice in regards to how you actually start up the game or switch to a different game. And for the first time in pretty much since Stadia came out, I was able to just switch devices seamlessly. I was able to go from my TV to my Mac to my phone and you can pause, play, pick up anytime that you need to. So it's actually a pretty good experience. In the past, when I've done a ton of Stadia videos, it's been limited to either a mobile device or it's been limited to the PC. Now for me, having the option of all three of my different screens here in my home does make it a much more viable option. Now in regards to connection issues, visual issues, or anything like that, yes, there are still those issues from time to time. Now when I was playing on the Chromecast, I will be honest, I didn't actually have any slowdown or any buffering or any sort of pixelation of the screen whatsoever. And that was also the same on the Google Pixel 5. For some reason though, while I was using it with Chrome, you did you know, kind of every now and then have maybe a little bit of pixelation, slow down, or the audio would slightly desync from the visuals for a short period of time before then reconnecting. There was also a slight bug when I went from one device to another, where a little tip that comes up in the corner of the screen on Cyberpunk didn't actually go away, and I had to reload a save and kind of start maybe five or so minutes back, but again, wasn't really too much of a problem. Now also, all the gameplay that you're seeing here with Cyberpunk in the background is recorded within the kind of first 20 minutes or so of the game, so obviously no spoilers the game itself is incredible and if you guys want me to actually try and do a review on cyberpunk let me know by leaving a comment down below but overall guys i just thought i would make this video to kind of show to you guys that i do listen i do look at the comments and i do read your guys feedback and yes in this instance i may have been slightly wrong with how quickly i said that stadia was going to be dying out now do i think it's still going to be the next greatest thing in gaming well not really. Obviously, the next generation of consoles and PC gaming is still going to be number one, in my opinion. But in regards to Stadia, it is still a viable platform. And hopefully moving forward, if Google continues to support it and continues to get some really awesome games like Cyberpunk, I'm actually going to be playing it a little bit more. Now, initially, when I actually got the Cyberpunk pre-order, what I was originally going to do is just sell the controller and the Chromecast Ultra to basically get back the money that I spent on the game. But actually, after playing Cyberpunk for around an hour or so, that's not the case. I'm going to keep it and I'm going to continue to play Cyberpunk and some really awesome games that may be coming out on Stadia moving forward. Now, if there's anything that you guys want to know on Stadia or anything that I haven't covered in any of my previous videos, let me know with a comment down below. And if you did enjoy this video and you do like it when I go back and kind of maybe recap some of my older videos and slightly tweak my opinion, then let me know by leaving a thumbs up down below. And if you're not already subscribed, now is a great time to do so. Like I mentioned in my previous video, going into 2021, we're going to have a massive brand redesign here on the channel. Everything's going to be fresh and new. So if you are subscribed already, turn those notifications so you're notified anytime that I post a new video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs. Glass. Thanks very much for watching, and this time I will catch you guys in the new year.